Hey, welcome back. Thank you so much for deciding to be with us for our middle of the week Bible study here at College Side. We're grateful uh, for everyone who makes the choice to, to spend time in God's Word with us. We have uh, been in the book of James studying together over the last several weeks and uh, after a couple of week break. Um, we're going to be back there today in James chapter 1. I mentioned last week, we just got a couple of weeks left this summer, starting in, um, in August, and I'll give you the exact dates next time we will live stream a Bible class. And so be, uh, be on the lookout for that. So if, if, if being home is still the best choice for you or if that's a long-term thing or if you're watching this at an off time, um, even after the fact, uh, then there will still be online uh, content that we will provide. Before we start together right now, uh, I always want to ask God to bless our time, and then we will begin together. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful for your word and, and every word of it, all parts of it. We're thankful for the beauty of your word and transformation that we experience when we engage with your word. Father, I pray that you would bless us in our effort tonight. We are so thankful for Jesus Christ who gives meaning and purpose to all things. We pray in his name together. And we say amen. James chapter 1 starting in the 22nd verse, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless kind of scary. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. So we talked last week about being quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. We're quick to hear God's word and God's instruction to us. We believe in God and we believe that God has something to say to us. I hope that you believe that. I hope that you believe that God has something to say to you because he does have something to say to you. We're slow to speak because we're more interested in hearing from God and being certain that what we hear from God is, 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 is the truth than, than, than we are to speak, and we're slow to anger. So the word, James says, saves our souls. The more that we are in the word, the more that we look like Jesus Christ. Now, I always pray before I begin reading a passage or studying a passage. I do that personally in my own individual uh, private time of study and devotion to the Lord, but I do it publicly as well. And I'll tell you, uh, you don't have to do that. Um, it's not like a command or anything. I think it's a good idea. But you don't have to do that. Um, but, but I'll tell you why I do that. Because I want to center my thoughts, I want to center myself on both Jesus Christ and the pursuit that I have in this study, whatever study I'm engaged in. And so when I pray to God before I study, thank you for the word and the transformation that comes from the word, what I'm doing is I'm recognizing that I am dependent on the word that I don't have the ability in and of in my in myself to, to do anything 
And so I'm dependent on the word, but I'm also confessing that my aim is Jesus Christ, that the trajectory of my life is Jesus Christ. And so the word changes us when we do those things. Be sensitive to God's word. But be sensitive to the pursuit that you have. The pursuit that we have is not merely academic. The pursuit that we have is Jesus Christ and the transformation that comes through his word. So as we move on into this week, one of the things that we see is the connection between receiving the word the right way and then doing what the word says. That word at the beginning of verse 22, be. That's worth underlining. But be doers of the word. Be. Could be translated continually do the word. Continually do the word. Or it could be translated, keep on striving to be. Keep up, keep at it, keep going, keep doing the word. Not just hear the word, not just study the word, not even just learn the word, but do the word. Now, the Old Testament concept of hearing from God involved doing. Sometimes we tell our kids there's a difference between hearing and listening, right? You can hear something but not be listening. You, something can go in your ear, something can go in your head. I can make a request of one of my three sons and they can hear me, especially if they're on that iPad. You know what I'm saying? you got kids or grandkids. You know what I'm talking about. If they're on that iPad and you say their name, hey, Josiah, hey, Silas, hey, John David, they can hear me say their name, but if they're on that iPad, they're not listening. Listening involves doing. Be doers of the Word. Listen and do the Word. There, there's there's a breakdown. I, I think we would all agree. I have a couple of questions, but you know, I don't even want to ask the question because I, I think we would all agree that there's a breakdown between hearing and doing. There, there's a breakdown specific, in, in all contexts of life, but specifically in a spiritual, religious, biblical context, there is a different, there is such a, a disconnect between hearing and doing. It's easy to hear, but it's hard to do. Now, we talked about receiving the word last week, right? Um, quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. He rolls out, James does, three progressive ways to receive the word. Quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. But he also rolls out three progressive ways to do what the word says. So there's great synergy in these, uh, in this section of the chapter, in chapter one, so I got three points that I want to make to you in this section of our time together. How do we hear and do, and specifically do? How do we listen? And I think James has got something to say to us. Here's the first one: hearing and doing without deception. Look again at verse 22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. You can be deceived, verse 23. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, not a doer, he's like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away, and at once he forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and preserves... Being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, he deceives his heart. This person's religion is worthless. Hearing and doing without deception. If I want to hear and then do, and that's to say if I want to listen to what God says, I've got to quit deceiving myself. What does Satan 
how does Satan try to deceive us? What does he want us to believe about the Word? About Christ? Well, here, here's one, and, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you, we have, we have fed this lie in the church. People like me at times have fed this lie unintentionally, right? Not on purpose, but fed this lie that hearing the Word is enough. We've made it so easy to be consumers of the Word. By design, church in our time, and it has been this way for decades, is driven by consumerism. Come and sit and listen, and that's pretty much it. James says, mm, mm, listen, that, that, that's not how it works. Be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. It, it's a deception to think that it's enough to just hear. It's a deception. The, the point of the mirror parable that he tells, it's like a man who looks in a mirror at his natural face, which means he knows what he looks like, but when he walks away from the mirror, he forgets what he looks like. To hear the Word means while the Word is being taught, while the Word is being preached, you can make some connections and you can see some things in the reflection of the mirror, but as soon as the Word has stopped being spoken to you, because you're not a doer of the Word, you forget everything. What do we see when we look into the mirror of the Word, we see our sin. We see the perfection of Jesus. We see what we can be through the perfection of Christ dealing with our sin. And if all we do is hear that, then we never act on it. And it sounds like such good news. And I can come every single Sunday. And I can come every middle of the week Bible study. I can watch everything online. And it sounds good. And I like that. But as soon as, it, as, soon as I hit pause, as soon as I hit stop, as soon as I walk out of the building, I forget and make no connection to our sin, to the perfection of Jesus, to what I can be because of the perfection of Jesus Christ. In order for me to act on those things, I've got to be a doer of the Word who sees in that mirror and then acts on them. He calls the Word the law of liberty. Because that's what it is. The Word's not bad news. The Word is good news. It's liberty. It's unshackled living. Which means that I can bridle my tongue that I can be transformed through the Word. And the quickest way to see if you've been paying attention to what you see in the mirror, if you've been doing and following up on what God has put on your heart, is to see how much you talk. It's deception to believe that all you got to do is hear the Word. you got to do the Word. Well, what does that mean? Well, that brings to the second thought, hearing and doing without selfishness. Look at the 27th verse. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction. Now listen, we live in a time and we live in a, in a generation of the church where sometimes we think that hearing the Word and doing the Word are at war with one another. And so what happens is you have groups that are all about the study of God's Word. If I had to choose, I think you know what I would choose. That's where I find my home, the study of God's Word. But then you have another, typically younger, uh, typically slightly more progressive uh, bent of Christianity that says it's all about doing. So we need to go visit orphans, we need to go visit widows, we need to, to have a, a, a passionate jail ministry, we need, we need to do all of these things, we need to be out in our community. It doesn't matter so much about the study of God's Word, and I want you to see that James says it's not either or, it's both. You can hear the Word and do it. Listen, what you hear in the Word is so important. 
the time that you spend like this, but also the time that you spend personally interacting with God's Word is so important. I, I, I can't tell you how important, I can't describe to you how important it is. But so too is the time that you spend doing. And orphans and widows, certainly that ministry is not an exhaustive ministry. It's not meant, James doesn't mean for it to be an exhaustive list. But he uses this as an example. You see, orphans and widows in the biblical world, in the original audience, were both una unable to reciprocate in any way. Caring for orphans and widows revealed real, deep affection and love. Because there could be no expectation for return in any way. When, when, when a believer in this part of, of history cared for an orphan or widow, they weren't going to get that back. Because orphans and widows just didn't have the ability to do it. Let me put it this way. To demonstrate that you're doing the word means that you have to love people who you find unlovable in practical ways. That you love people who can't give you anything back. We do a good job with that. Let me give you a really practical challenge this week. Try to find a situation. Maybe you're already doing this, okay? And that's great. But try to find a situation around, a circumstance in your life where you can serve a person who can't give you anything in return. Maybe because you're anonymous and maybe because their circumstance in life is such that there's no way that they could return anything to you. The more we do that, the more we come to appreciate that this is precisely how God loves us. He loves us. He loves us. Hearing and doing without selfishness. So we talked about don't be deceived. Don't deceive yourself thinking that all you have to do is hear the word. Hear and do without selfishness. Do for people that can do nothing back for you. And then hear and do without compromise. Look at the end of verse 27. To keep oneself unstained from the world. How could the world stain what we do? It is possible. It's, it's possible. How could the world stain what we do? Let me give you a couple of principles. Um, right now. Doing is expected. The expectation, if you're a believer in Jesus, and I'm assuming that you are if you're watching this, and if you're not, I want you to join our family. Um, but if you're a follower of Jesus, doing is expected of you. That's the first principle. The second principle Progressing in doing is also the way that it works. You're, you're going to be progressive in your doing, you know, which means you're going to do more a year from now than you are right now. If you're growing, if you're hearing, if you're listening to the Word. It's not, you're not going to have life-altering, life-changing, life-transforming fruit at the beginning, but the more you grow in Christ, the more transformative that fruit becomes. Don't feel bad if you're not there yet, is what I'm saying. That's the second principle. It, it grows. Here's the third principle. Doing good should be for the Lord. How can the world stain what we do? When the principles of the world are what undergird our ministry, when we're in it for ourselves, when we're in it for credit, when we're in it to, to make ourselves feel whatever, then the world has stained our ministry. 
because our ministry ceases to be about God and about others and more about ourselves. Doing good for the sake of good is never enough. Jesus Christ is the banner that we walk under for his honor and his glory. Do not be deceived. Hearing and doing without compromise means that I'm for Jesus. And if that means that the world kind of pushes back because they don't like what that means, or if that means I've got to push back against myself because it's not about my ego, it's not about my gifts, it's not about my talents, it's about God himself and Jesus Christ and the honor that I ascribe to them. Don't deceive yourself. Be a doer of the word. Do the word this week. What does that look like for you right now? What does that look like? And challenge yourself and be challenged. Let's pray together. Father, we're thankful for the opportunity that we have to spend time in this way. We're thankful for the technology that is at our disposal that makes this possible. And Father, we pray tonight that we would be doers of the word in greater ways. We pray through Christ. Amen. Be blessed this week.